it's going to be a fun and exciting and scary full moon Samhain. Blue full moon crazy Halloween weekend. And we may as well start it right now with some spooky stuff from Aleister Crowley and the Understanding Aleister Crowley's Those Tarot. Today we're going to talk about the Magus card and, oh, and the High Priestess or the Priestess card. So I hope you're following along in the book. And uh, I posted uh, sort of a couple enlargements of uh, these uh, tarot cards on my site this morning. So as I'm uh, uh, reading along here uh, and making reference to the features of the cards, uh, you can look, uh, gaze at those images. We'll start with Atu. Number one, the Magus. The formal title is the Magus of Power. It's the planetary trump of Mercury. The original design is a fair youth with winged helmet and heels, equipped as a magician, displays his art his attitude suggests the shape of the swastika or the thunderbolt, the messenger or the message of God. The Hebrew letter is Beth, which means a house. In the tree of life, it's path number 12, joining one, Kether, the crown, to three, Bina, understanding. The colors are yellow, purple, gray, indigo, rayed violet. The little verse from Heart of the Master, which every one of these cards of the trumps uh, has, says, The true self is the meaning of the true will. Know thyself through thy way. Calculate well the formula of thy way. Create freely. Absorb joyously. Divide intently. Consolidate completely. Work thou, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and for eternity. I headed up with a little excerpt from a letter that Frida Harris wrote to Crowley in May 11th, 1941. I have had a wrapper for the catalog made by the Sun Engraving Company. This will be beautifully printed with the magician produced, reproduced perfectly as a card, the right size and engraved on it. Before I discuss the symbolism of the Magus card, I have to set to rest the absurd rumor that Crowley intended there to be three Magus cards in the Thoth Tarot. By no stretch of the imagination, did Crowley intend to create a 24 trump or an 80 card tarot deck? Any theory or suggestion to the contrary would have him spinning in his grave if he had one. And displays a profound ignorance of Crowley and the Book of Thoth. Crowley approved only one Magus card for inclusion in the Thoth tarot. It is the image reproduced in the Book of Thoth, and the one which Lon is holding up <laughs> on his screen right now, that is the one he approved. 
and it's the only Magus in the deck currently uh, included in decks published by U.S. Game Systems. The Mystery of the Three Magi of the Thoth Tarot is no mystery at all. 78 cards of a standard tarot deck are printed on four sheets of 20 cards per sheet. At least they were at that time, at the time I wrote this. This provides room for an 80 card size image per print run. Most publishers fill the extra spaces by printing two instructional or promotional cards. Rather than doing that, the Swiss publishers, A.G. Mueller, decided to treat the Crowley Harris aficionados to a little bonus by filling the extra spaces with two earlier versions of the Magus that Harris completed, but Crowley rejected. The two extra magi are nothing more than the, more esoteric than the thoughtful bonus from a generous publisher. So please, no more talk of the three wise men. The Magus is not only the title of the mercurial trump that in older decks bears the title magician or juggler, it is also the title of the second highest level of spiritual illumination a human soul can attain. Toward the end of his life, Crowley calculated he reached this initiatory degree on his 40th birthday, October 12, 1915, Era Vulgara. Six years previously, on December 7, 1909, in the North African Sahara, near Biskra, Algeria, he recorded his ceremonially induced vision of the third Enochian Aether. That is the source of much imagery found in the Magus card. He describes this as follows. Mercury is preeminently the bearer of the wand. Energy sent forth. This card therefore represents the wisdom, the will, the word, the logos, by whom the worlds were created. It represents the will. In brief, he is the sun, S-O-N. The manifestation in act of the idea of the father. He is the male correlative of the high priestess, unquote. The magus is also the first of the alchemical trumps and represents the alchemical element and principle of Mercury. Mercury, explain, Crowley explains, represents action in all forms and phases. He is the fluidic basis of all transmission of activity. And on the dynamic theory of the universe, he is the substance thereof." Unquote. The figure of the Magus actually forms the alchemical glyph of Mercury. Now, if you look at that, okay, those wings down there, that's the point. That's the arrowhead point of the alchemical symbol Mercury. And his arms are sort of a broken cross, like the alchemical Mercury. And that snake around his head are, are the horns of Mercury. So it, look, that's the alchemical mercury. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. The two snakes at his head are the horns and the huge stylized wings at his feet make the arrowhead. He's projected upon the caduceus of mercury. Behind the left wing at his feet, barely visible, is a golden sunburst uh, affirming Mercury's role as the herald of the sun. Behind the right wing is a sinocephalus. Sinocephalus. 
I like to say Sinosophilus an awful lot. <laughs> Snuffleupagus was a Snuffleupagus. Okay, the Sinocephalus is the ape of Thoth. Okay, and you can see him climbing up there. See him? See that ape? Everyone who attains the grade of mages is, is assigned a pet, a pet monkey. It's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's odd, but the image there has two left hands. Go figure. This creature, who seems to be groping its way up from the lower right-hand corner of the card, is the personification of an ironic curse that afflicts Thoth Mercury and all who attain the grade of Magus. Because falsehood and misunderstanding are inherent in all speech and writing, because falsehood and misunderstanding Oh, that, I just said that because falsehood and misunderstanding are inherent in all speech and writing. It's the cosmic duty of the ape of Thoth to constantly mock the work of the Magus and distort his words. As Crowley points out, quote, manifestation implies illusion, unquote. The traditional weapons of the Magus are the wand, cup, sword, and disc. Quote, with the wand createth he, with the cup preserveth he, with the dagger destroyeth he, with the coin redeemeth he. Unquote. These are the weapons the Magus joyfully juggles in midair along with four additional symbols the style or stylus, papyrus, torch, and the winged egg. Please pay, pay, pay special attention to that winged egg. That egg is going to be the star of the uh, mystery of sexual alchemy that is displayed in the Thoth Tarot. We're going to see that egg again in these trumps. Okay, uh, the wand is the phoenix wand and symbolizes resurrection through the natural generative process. The cup is the Grecian style with two handles. The sword appears to be a stiletto, the weapon of stealth, deceit, and vengeance. The disc displays the eightfold star of Mercury. The style and papyrus are tools and instruments of the scribe. <clears throat> like Lon said, <laughs> the winged egg is an especially important factor in the evolving symbolism of the Thoth Tarot. In this card, it aptly represents the pre-existent zero, which, like the Magus himself, is the source of all positive manifestation. But it'll soon reappear in Atu number six, the lovers, and other trumps as the symbol known as the Orphic Egg. As the trumps develop, this egg will undergo a most wondrous alchemical adventure, one that is told only in the Thoth Tarot. Other elements of the card are at first difficult to see. If we look carefully, we see that the caduceus is much larger than it first appears. Its rod reaches below the feet of the magus to the very bottom of the card. Let's see. 
where, by virtue of its upward thrust, it appears to have stretched and finally penetrated the membrane of space. The wings of the caduceus in, span the entire width of the top of the card and reach down behind the neck of the magus. Now, a lot of people think that that little thing right there is the wings of the caduceus. It's not. It's just the center of the wings of the caduceus. The wings go all the way down behind his head. The, the wings are the blue thing. Or the, the feathers are the blue thing. What appears to be the downward pointing arrow in the disc of the caduceus that thing right there is not really an arrow. It's a symbol of the diving dove of the Holy Spirit. It's actually the symbol of the descending dove. So that's the comment on the Magus card. And I think we have time today to also talk about the High Priestess card. So that High Priestess card is the one that really, really, really shows that uh, the elements of projective synthetic geometry. And if I had it handy here, I would show you uh, how it matches up with the Queen of uh, Queen of Cups. But I'll do that a little later. Atu. A two, two. The High Priestess. Her official title is Priestess of the Silver Star. Planetary Trump of the Moon. The original design is a crowned princess sits before the veil of Isis between the pillars of Seth. She is reading intently an open book. That's the original design. The Hebrew letter is Gimel, which means camel. On the Tree of Life, it's past path 13, joining number one, Kether, the crown, to, to number six, Tifereth, beauty. The colors are blue, silver, coal, pale blue, and silver, rayed blue. The little poem from Heart of the Master says, Purity is to live only to the highest, and the highest is all. Be thou Artemis to Pan, be thou as Artemis to Pan. Read thou in the Book of the Law and break through the veil of the Virgin. Unquote. And in, uh, let's see, the moon partaking as she does of the highest and the lowest and filling all the space between is the most universal of the planets, Crowley has stated. It may seem curious that the priestess represents the moon, <clears throat> but Atu 18, the moon, represents the zodiac sign of Pisces. We'll see what Crowley has to say when we discuss the moon card. Here, let's be satisfied <clears throat> to know that the priestess represents the moon in her highest aspect, the aspect that joins the human to the divine. The moon of Atu 18 is, well, something else. As only the middle pillar path that spans the abyss, the position of the High Priestess on the Tree of Life is unique. She links the ultimate father of Kether to the son of Tifereth, and in doing so, joins the supernal triad to the rest of the tree. In this card, Crowley points out, quote, is the one, she's the one link between the archetypal and formative worlds, unquote. 
The abyss she traverses is quite literally the desert of the soul, and like the desert camel, she's the only vehicle capable of crossing that terrible wasteland. The principal deities connected with this card are those who by tradition represent the lunar goddess, virgin priestess, huntress, and most importantly, the powers and mysteries of woman as the initiatrix. If you look carefully, you'll see that her bow is actually a three-stringed harp. For she's a huntress and hunts by enchantment. This card is a textbook display of the graphic principles of synthetic projective geometry. The arms of the priestess sweep upward, pulling and distorting the webbed network of space and light, forming a crescent bowl of magnificent of a magnificent moon-colored cup. The pillars on each side of her are obscured by the diagonal webbing and somewhat difficult to see. But it's important to be conscious of their presence when meditating on the composition of the card. Harris has brilliant brilliantly executed Crowley's description, which is as follows. The most spiritual form of Isis, the eternal virgin, the Artemis of the Greeks. She is clothed only in the luminous veil of light. It's important for high initiation to regard light not as the perfect manifestation of the eternal spirit, but rather as the veil which hides the spirit. It does so all the more effectively because of its incomparable, incomparably dazzling brilliance. Thus she is light and the body of light. She is the truth behind the veil of light. She is the soul of light. The high priestess is the initiatrix. Initiation means beginning. The objects that appear at the bottom of the card are not lunar symbols per se. Well, the camel is. The camel is, of course, indicative of the Hebrew letter Gimel, the Hebrew letter attributed to the high priestess. But the other objects, the crystals, the seeds, are suggestive of hidden and mysterious secrets of the beginning of life. And that's where we'll stop today. Tomorrow we'll pick up with the Empress. Start your weekend right now. That's an order. Stop work. Throw up your hands. Do something fun. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. Have a wild weekend, everyone.